Everyone knows the standard hole punch, but they actually come in a range of sizes, from really tiny to really large, and you can even get paper punches in custom shapes. Your standard hole punch that you might have in an office is actually a quarter of an inch. That's the diameter of the hole, and these usually have about a one to two inch reach. That means that I can only punch in from the edge about somewhere between one and two inches. And you get this very standard hole, just like you would in a piece of binder paper. But that can be a little clunky for a lot of crafting. It's a pretty large hole. And luckily, you can also find hand punches that are in smaller holes. This one is one eighth of an inch which gives you a nice clean smaller hole. This could be used for a brad or lacing something thick like leather or yarn. And for a really tiny little punch, there's a mini punch that's 1 16th of an inch that just gives you a really small hole, something that you might use for actually sewing with thread or um, a wax thread even, something that's gonna be fairly thin. And it's also good for really small mini brads. Now, if you want to make a hole in the middle of the page or anywhere longer beyond the reach of your handheld punch, you can use something like an awl, which is essentially like a really thick needle, almost like an ice pick at the end of a handle. And sometimes they have a tapered edge and then they just get fatter and fatter and fatter. Or sometimes the shaft is one continuous width and just the tip is tapered. And you punch this just straight through the paper. It's nice to work on top of something like a piece of cardboard. You could also use like a cutting mat. And you just punch right through and that's gonna give you a very small hole initially, but you can also press the all through there to increase the size of your hole. And that's gonna give you a pretty clean punch also. Now, unlike the hand punches that actually punch out a shape, this is just pushing the paper. And so you do get what we call an exit wound. It's where you get this little paper that splays on the back. You're not removing paper, you're just punching through it. So it creates that little fuzziness back there. Now let's say you wanna make a larger hole or you wanna punch through something much thicker than paper. There are other types of hand punches, something like a screw punch, this is called a zenith. Sometimes they have removable tips for different size holes. Sort of like those screwdrivers where you can change the tips. And this, you twist to punch through. And you definitely want to be working on something because I can also punch through the cardboard with this. You get a bigger exit wound just because this is cardboard. But it, it does actually punch a pretty nice hole. This works better for something like book board, something that's meant for crafting, not necessarily cardboard that tears a little bit. There are also large punches and decorative punches. And these you can usually find in the craft store with scrapbooking or memory making, even just with paper crafts in general. You can get something that's small, like a decorative punch, something that's a shape. It could be a silhouette of an animal or it could be a flower. And you can use these two ways. Originally, they were meant to just slide into your paper. They also have a limitation on how far they can reach in from the edge of the paper. And you would just press down to punch. And you wind up with a negative shape and a positive shape. So you can make confetti this way or you can punch out shapes into something. This works best on text weight paper. What's nice about these punches though too is that you can flip them over and use them in the opposite way. This paper is all black but let's say I had paper that had a specific word on it or I was using a magazine page that had a face or something I wanted to capture. By sliding my punch upside down around I can really specifically choose where I'm going to punch. Whereas if I use it in this orientation, I can't really see exactly where that shape is going to punch out. You'll really understand that more when we get to something like these larger hole punches. I always use these upside down because I can really choose where I'm going to punch. So you can see if I was just going to punch it like this and I wanted to center that little negative flower shape, I really can't see. But if I flip it over, I can perfectly line up where that negative flower shape is going to be and just punch it right out. And often these have a little sliding back to save those little punched pieces. These come in all shapes and sizes. I really love using something like the circle or a rectangle because then you can punch them out in different sizes and really layer them together. I can really see I have this tiny margin here where there's paper so I want to make sure that I capture all of that and by holding this upside down I can really see that. And then just punch. And then I get that cool shape. Now, as you use your punches, the blades will actually start to dull. And so there are two little tricks for that. And the first is using tin foil, just store-bought grocery store tin foil. If you punch this, it can actually sharpen your blade. 
And you can do this a couple of times. Because it is so flexible, sometimes they get stuck in there, so you just wanna peel them out. And you can lubricate these guys by just punching wax paper. And you have to be careful because the wax paper can also tear, so you don't wanna get stuck in there. If it doesn't make a perfectly clean cut, that's okay. You just wanna punch a little bit on the wax paper so that you're lubricating those blades just a tad. Just pop that out. Now this trick will only last for the lifetime of the punch. Eventually, if you're using these punches all the time, especially with really thin tissue papers that are more prone to tearing or really thick things like cardstock, this will only last a certain number of punches. Before craft punches were really popular, you actually had to use die cutting machines and they were really inaccessible and clunky and really expensive. But now with this popularity, you can get punches in all shapes and sizes, which allow you to create things really quickly. You can make confetti, gift tags, you can even whip up a bunting or a garland with just paper and a punch. Paper is one of those mediums that really is so versatile and it can be used for so many projects. I love to make a million and one different things out of paper, anywhere from book crafts to paper crafts, things like making 